Good evening to all the attendees here in India and uh, good morning to Ms. Sarah Wohler from the University of Wisconsin <laughs> Madison. We truly appreciate your kind time in joining us today for the Knowledge at KPT Admissions 101 workshop series. Uh, we know it's very early in the morning out there, so we truly appreciate you taking the time to join us uh, with the high school students, 12th grade students, parents and high school guidance counselors who have joined us today. To all the attendees who are from here in India, thank you very much uh, for joining us once again. As you may have seen in the outreach campaign that went to your high schools, uh, today's session topic is going to be about the University of Wisconsin-Madison. And we have Ms. Sarah Wooler who would be presenting more information about that. As shared in our communication, Ms. Sarah Wooler will be uh, presenting on her topic as well as about her institution. So please feel free to drop your questions in the Q&A section. And once the presentation is done, she'd be more than happy to answer your questions as well. And also to all the high school guidance counselors who are present today, I would like to kindly share that this is a recorded session and this will be shared with your school so you can share it with other students as well as other high schools in the region that we'll be sharing it with. That with that having been said that, uh, let's begin for the day and I'm gonna hand over the stage and the microphone to Ms. Sarah Wola. Ms. Sarah, welcome to the program and thank you once again. I wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for that kind introduction. So I'm just going to go ahead and share um, the PowerPoint. All right. All right. So I'm going to mute my video. Er, I'm going to turn off my video during the presentation just so it doesn't cut anything off, but I'd be more than happy to turn it back on when I answer questions at the end. So hello, everyone, and thank you for joining. Um, my name is Sarah Waller and I'm an International Admissions Counselor here with the University of Wisconsin-Madison. I'm also a proud Badger alum, so definitely feel free to let me know if you have any student life questions. Over the next 30 to 35 minutes, I'll provide a general overview of the university before getting into specifics about the application process, and then I'll reserve about the last half of the presentation for any questions. I'll also provide a brief overview of the U.S. higher education system, as well as application tips for international students. Um, again, definitely feel free to let me know if you have any questions in the chat. Um, that way you won't forget, and then I'll answer them live at the end. Oops. All right. So we understand that the college search journey can be an overwhelming process and just know that we are here to help. When considering colleges and universities, these are some of the major questions that we get and we just want to know that or we just want you to know that we'll answer them throughout the presentation today. So we'll talk about what are public colleges in the United States? Do you have my major in academics? Can I get in and what do you look for? We'll talk about general application tips for international students. How do I apply scholarship opportunities as well as university fit and campus life? So when considering coming to the U.S. to study, many students think about fit and which, what university might be a good match. So the first thing to note is that within the U.S. higher education system, it's decentralized and there are actually over 4,600 degree granting institutions. Because there are so many different colleges and universities, the types of colleges as well as the academic focuses vary. So for instance, there are three main types of colleges. The first is public or state universities and colleges. I won't get into a lot of detail about these since we'll talk more about them later, but the big thing to note is that they are publicly funded. The other two types of colleges are private nonprofit and private for, for profit universities and colleges. Unlike public institutions, these are not publicly funded, which means they can govern themselves and be a little bit more flexible. Now regarding academics, there are also a variety of different academic types that vary by each institution. So one college may focus on research, whereas another has a specialization, and there are also some liberal arts colleges, meaning they'll have a well-rounded general education requirements, so students are able to get a more holistic um, education while they are there. And it's also important to note that a college or university can be more than one of these types of things. 
So when thinking about public colleges, th these are some of the main characteristics. The first is that they are publicly funded. I kind of talked about this before, but this means that they have different tuition rates for residents and of the state as well as non-residents. If you look at schools' websites, they'll often have tuition and fees broken down by in-state and non-residents. For international students, um, you would either be a non-resident of the state or an international student. It might be broken up into that category as well. So you're gonna wanna make sure to look at that when thinking about the financial aspect of college and what your personal cost would be. So again, non-residence means everyone from the other 49 states as well as international students. Then, because they are also publicly funded, they have a close relationship with the state legislator as they're often um, impacted by governmental policies. They also tend to have a larger student population, which is because of the high focus on the public's access to education. They want their institution to be able to serve a lot of students and help them further their education. So kind of going along with their focus on access, another characteristic is that there's an emphasis on research and innovation. So kind of like making sure that the public has access to education, they also want to make sure that what they're doing, like the research they're conducting, is helping the public and making a difference in society. They really want what their institution stands for and what they're doing there to help create a better world and to help have influences beyond just the university itself. So the last thing I'll kind of talk about um, in regards to U.S. higher education in general is the different types of admission. So the first type is holistic. Um, this means that all aspects of the, your application are reviewed. For example, this is what UW-Madison um, does. So although academic excellence is most important, we want to see you not just in the context of a student, but also as an individual. This means that we will look at every part of your application, your essays, your letters of recommendation, involvement, GPA, test scores, and grades to determine whether we think you may be a good fit for UW. So again, we're not just looking at your academics, but we're also looking what you do outside of your academics and you in the context of an individual. So the next type is threshold. Threshold admission focuses on a set range of admission requirements. So unlike holistic, this might mean that institutions set a certain GPA, test score, or um, something else like that as a requirement for students to meet. Next, we have highly competitive admission, and this means that there's typically limited capacity, but lots of applications. An example of this would be Ivy League schools where they're getting a lot of applications, but they generally have a really small admit rate, just as there is that limited capacity factor. And then lastly, we have open admission. This is common at community colleges and you often um, only need to complete high school or have high school completion in order to go. All right, so now that we've talked a little bit about higher education as a whole, I'm kind of gonna transition into the UW-Madison specific aspect of this presentation. So one of the biggest factors that sets UW-Madison apart is our belief in the Wisconsin idea. Simply put, this is the belief that an education from UW-Madison should is meant to benefit people not just in Wisconsin, but nationally and even globally. And then an education from UW will push you to learn far beyond the classroom. This idea has led the university to a lot of firsts, such as developing the nation's first dance program, as well as discovering vitamins A and B, and even alumni conducting research on Antarctica. So whether you're set on a major of your dreams or you are still deciding, one important aspect of the college search is to making sure that your major is offered. Here at UW, we have eight different schools and colleges, and within them, we offer 129 different majors and 71 certificates, which are UW's version of a minor. Certificates are really cool because they allow students to get experience in certain fields without necessarily having to meet all of the requirements of a major. So I know one thing that I really enjoyed about my time at UW was having options to explore and take classes outside of my major to discover interests I didn't know that I had, as well as narrow down what I wanted to pursue. So just note that whether you 
know what you want to study or you're undecided, know that UW-Madison has options for you. I also always like to mention that it's completely okay to be undecided and there's a lot of resources for students who are undecided. So don't feel like you need to pick a major just for the sake of applying. When I was a student here, I actually worked for Student Orientation Advising and Registration, commonly referred to as SOAR. And I can confirm working there and being an admissions counselor that we have thousands of students come in as undecided. We don't expect students to know exactly what they want to do. And I also always like to highlight that we don't give preference um, for students who have picked a major versus students who are undecided. So just know that it's completely okay to mark undecided and you don't need to pick a major just for the sake of applying. So the next few slides will focus on individual schools and colleges. And first we have the College of Agricultural and Life Sciences. CALS offers a lot of unique majors, so that whether you want to go to medical school, do agricultural research, study genetics, or look deeper into rural issues, this could be your home on campus. Students also get a lot of hands-on experience, and 63 actually participate in research or field experience, which is not surprising considering that CALS has 11 different agricultural research facilities across the state, which totals over 8,000 acres of land in Wisconsin. Some of our students have also worked on the dairy farm we have on campus for animal science or veterinary work, and others work with the staff or faculty to produce the milk and ice cream we consume on campus. So next up, we have the Wisconsin School of Business, which is consistently ranked in the top 20 in the country and is home to the Accenture Leadership Center which is one of the few nationwide in-house business leadership centers that give students hands-on leadership experience and opportunities. So as a student, you'll receive an in-depth understanding of all aspects of business as you're required to take courses from all core areas, business law, and then in-depth courses in your major. This really makes sure that students have a holistic understanding of the business world and really feel prepared for the different questions or the different situations they might be um, upon graduation. So within the School of Business, 89% of students find employment within six months of graduation, and that really speaks to our over 600 corporate partners. You'll also notice that we offer freshman direct entry. So around half of the students um, admitted to the School of Business will be directly admitted, but you can also apply after your freshman um, or sophomore year on campus. So if students that were undecided and decided they wanted to do business, or if we thought they were a really good fit for UW but not quite ready for the School of Business, just know there are opportunities to apply once you're on campus. So if you're interested right now in applying um, directly into the School of Business, what you'll do is you'll indicate a business major or business undecided as the first choice on your application, and then we'll automatically consider you for direct entry. So we'll really look to your academic history, and if you're applying, we recommend you discuss your interests and experiences in your personal essay. This can be a really good way for us to better understand why business and why UW-Madison. So then, like I said, if we think you're a good fit for UW, but not quite prepared for the School of Business, you'll be admitted as a pre-business student. You'll take some core courses your first year on campus, and then you, you can apply once you're already on campus. I also always like to point out the people who will be your pre-business advisors are actually the ones reading the applications um, for the School of Business once you're already on campus and applying. So they're a really, really good resource to meet with and ask any questions that you may have. So next up, we have the School of Education, which has a wide variety of different majors focusing on teaching, health, and the art professions. It's also the number one, it's ranked number one in public school of education. And it's a little different in the sense that half of the majors do not require a teaching certification. So although if you want to do any sort of education, you'll obviously be within the school, there's a lot of other things that you can do as well. So my roommate while I was in college was a rehabilitation psych major within this college, and now she is actually going to grad school for occupational therapy. So you can see that it really is a school of diverse majors and diverse interests. 
So another unique aspect of the School of Education is the dance program. It actually was the nation's first dance program, and it does offer freshman direct entry. So what you'll do if that's something you're interested in, you'll indicate that on your application, you'll submit a supplemental application, and then you would request an audition. So next up, we have the College of Engineering. This is highly renowned and again, consistently ranked top 20 in the nation. Students get a lot of hands-on experiences and opportunities and over 85% of our engineering students participate in an internship or co-op. And so what a co-op is, is it means that you're working full-time in an engineering firm, you're getting hands-on experience, but you're still considered a full-time student at UW-Madison. So this is really great for students to be able to see what a career in engineering might look like and really give them hands-on experience in the field while they're still in college. And then another interesting thing about the College of Engineering is that students are able to take classes to receive an operator license for the nuclear reactor we have on campus. So it's fully functional and it's really cool that that's actually something that students can do while they're an undergrad and they'll get that experience as well. Again, you'll notice that we do offer freshman direct entry. So if that's something you're interested in, you would indicate um, a major, a first choice major within the College of Engineering, and then you would choose a second choice major outside of it. So much like business, we will automatically consider you for general admission into UW-Madison, as well as direct entry into the College of Engineering. So we'll really look to, um, again, that essay, if you have a specific interest in engineering in UW-Madison, why that's a good fit for you, um, as well as related coursework. And then um, if we think that you're a good fit for UW-Madison but not engineering, you would be admitted into your second choice major and then you could apply to the College of Engineering while you're on campus. So next up, we have the School of Human Ecology, which uses creativity, science, and curiosity to solve some of the oldest problems and really enhance our lives. So the majors within SOHI are all centered around improving people's daily lives and well-being. There are a variety of unique majors that all require some type of internship or field experience. So you would work with your advisor to figure out what would be a good match for you. So I know some students, um, who are in the human development and family studies major actually choose to work in the child development lab on campus and work with younger students and really put what they're learning in the classroom to work outside of it. It's also really cool that students in the textiles and fashion design major are able to work with the largest selection of college textiles and they actually have a fashion show at the end of every year to showcase their work. Students within the textile and fashion design major can also apply to spend their senior year in the Fashion Institute of Technology or FIT in New York City to further their education. Students who do take advantage of this can still earn their bachelor's degree from UW as well as an associate's degree from the Fashion Institute of Technology. So as you can see, the College of Letters and Science is our largest college and offers the most majors such as political science, economics, communication arts, psychology, math, and more. And as a political science and communication arts major, this was my home on campus. This is what we like to call the College of Discovery, as students often start out here as they're finding their way and exploring their different interests. So if you're interested in social science-based research um, much of that is also housed in LNS, such as the Institute for Research on Poverty, which is one of the most prominent of its kind in the US. It's also important to note that we offer freshman direct entry for the music program. So much like direct entry for dance, if you're interested, you'll indicate that in your application, fill out a supplemental application, and schedule an audition with the music department. And then last but not least, we have the School of Nursing and the School of Pharmacy. So the School of Nursing offers one undergraduate degree from nursing and it's located in Cooper Hall. The cool thing about it being located in Cooper Hall is that it's right across from the UW Hospital Complex. So it really gives students the chance to shadow nurses on rotations or clinicals. 
And then Cooper Hall also has the Center for Technology Enhanced Nursing. This is one of the few nationwide collaborative learning environments. And within it, there are four different simulation rooms with different um, situations. So students are really able to practice their nursing skills in different scenarios prior to actually having to work in the field. It really allows them to feel comfortable and confident in a variety of situations. And then the School of Pharmacy offers two different types of majors. The first is pharmacology and toxicology. This is really ideal for students who wanting to pursue pharmaceutical or scientific research. They're really interested in the industry but don't necessarily want to become a pharmacist. And then the second is pharmacy, and this is an accelerated program to become a pharmacist in as little as six years. So if anyone in the audience is sitting out there thinking, you know, I've really wanted to become a pharmacist, this is a really great option for you. So now that you know more about what we offer, you might be thinking, well, can I get in? And I can't directly answer that because we offer a holistic review process. I kind of talked about this earlier, but just to reiterate, that means we have no formulas or minimums, no GPA or test score cutoffs. So we really do look at every aspect of your application. So academic excellence is most important, but it is not all that we consider in making our decision. Again, we want to get a picture of you not just in the context of a student, but, as, but also as an individual and see if you will be a good fit to our campus community. So we'll look at every part of your application. So we'll look at your essays, letters of recommendations, um, GPA, test score, your transcript, but we'll also look at if there's anything else that you think is important to consider. We'll read everything in your file to really get a picture of you um, outside of academics and really try to have a holistic understanding of who you are as well. So we're looking for students who have done well academically before college. This could be rigorous coursework like AP, IB, A-level, honors, really whatever is um, offered to you at your school. We also require a letter of recommendation from an academic source such as a teacher or counselor. And then within your application essays, we look for college level writing as well as content. So if you're able to tell us something we don't already know and we're really able to learn more about you, that can be really helpful. And if you have a specific reason about why UW-Madison or what you're interested in, it can be really helpful to include that in your campus essay just so we have a better idea of why UW-Madison may be a good fit for you. And then outside of academics, we want to see an engaged student. And this spans from being involved in athletics, student organization, part-time jobs, volunteer work, or anything that you commit a decent amount of time to. So this can look different for different students. That might be if students have family commitments or anything like that, also feel free to put those down as we really just want to get a better understanding of you um, outside of academics as well. So I hope by now you're excited about UW and all that we have to offer. And if you're thinking, well, how do I apply? We're actually about to discuss just that. So transfer students can apply through the UW system app and then freshman students can apply either via the common app or UW system app. The two application processes are nearly the same and we don't give preference to one application over the other. It's really just about um, if you have a certain prompt that really speaks to you as well as what other schools you're applying to that will really determine what um, application you use. So they both require two essays. They provide an opportunity for you to talk about your extracurricular leadership and employment history. They require one letter of recommendation from an academic source, as well as ACT or SATs. And then if all four years of high school were not taught in English, you will also be required to submit the TOEFL or IELTS scores as part of your application. And I just wanna highlight that we also are now accepting Duolingo English test as proof of English proficiency as well. So here we have more about our deadlines and decision timelines. So for freshmen who are applying for early action, all materials are due November 1st and you'll hear back from us by the end of December. So you'll get one of three decisions, admit, deny, or defer. 
Defer means we think you could do well here on campus. We just want to know a little bit more about you. And so we really do encourage students to submit their mid-year grades. And so then for freshmen who are applying for regular decision, all materials are due February 1st and you'll hear back from us by the end of March. Again, you'll get one of three decisions, admit, deny, or waitlist. And so waitlist means you'll hear back from us after May 1st, which is National Decision Day, when we have a better idea of what our class is shaping out to be. We think you could be a good addition to campus. We're just not exactly sure what our class has shaken out to be. And so then once we have a better idea of that, we will look to see if and when we will go to the waitlist. And so then for transfer students who are applying for priority decision, they will apply for February 1st and hear back by the end of March. Regular decision, apply by March 1st and hear back by the end of April. And for spring regular decision, apply by October 1st and hear back by the end of December. Transfer students can have one of three decisions, admit, deny, or defer. And so again, defer means we think you could be a good addition on campus, but we just want to know a little bit more about you. And so again, we really do encourage you to submit those mid-year grades, um, and then we will evaluate later to see if um, kind of if we think you will be a good addition to campus. And so then I always like to point out that with those application deadlines, please make sure to have all of your materials in by that deadline. So not just submitting your application, but making sure that your letters of recommendation, your test score, your transcripts, that everything has arrived to our office by then. And I also like to point out that um, when you're thinking about applying for college, colleges and UW-Madison and you're thinking about kind of the application process and our requirements, I just like to stress that we don't have any pathway agreements. So just note that when applying for um, UW-Madison. So another important factor to consider when thinking about college is the financial aspect. We believe that a UW-Madison education is an investment in your future, and to get a better idea of what your personal costs will be, we really encourage you to go to the net price calculator on our website. There you'll enter in some more personal information, and you'll get a specific idea of what your costs would be um, to attend UW-Madison. So here, um, at UW, many students also apply for scholarships to help fund their education. And if you want to apply for scholarships, what you do is go to the Wisconsin Scholarship Hub or WISH, and you can apply for scholarships right after you submit your application. You don't have to be accepted before you, to, before you apply. With that being said, there are a variety of different scholarships offered and most open November 1st and have a deadline of February 1st. So just thinking back to those deadlines and decisions on the previous page, um, if you're thinking about applying, please make sure that you give yourself um, you give yourself time to apply that freshman regular decision deadline is February 1st. So just note that if you apply then and then are trying to apply for scholarships after, there may be less scholarships available just because a lot of them do have a closing and a deadline of February 1st. And then because there are, are a variety of new and continuing scholarships every year, it is also worth it to continue checking every year as some might be added that you may be a good match for um, as you go on later. So it's always a good idea to continue checking even if you don't match for a scholarship right away. So outside of majors offered the application process and the financial aspect of college, most students also consider the campus environment and if they believe they would be a good fit for the community. So attending virtual events, following campuses social media and checking out student orgs are a really good way to find to find out more about college outside of academics if you're interested in what our campus looks like we also have a virtual tour on our website that can be a really good resource for students to see where different buildings are and really be able to get a better idea of campus as a whole um, this is really important as finding the right fit is important to is an important aspect of finding success on campus as well 
So here at UW, we have a large vibrant campus community of over 44,000 students who come from all 50 states, and over 130 different countries. So although we are a larger campus, it can be very easy for students to build a small community where they feel supported. And one thing that I really enjoyed was going to this, a larger institution, I knew that I would have opportunities to meet people that I wouldn't have met otherwise. And so it was a really great way to meet people from all different backgrounds and perspectives. And so while I was an undergraduate here to help build my community, I got involved in a variety of different student organizations, volunteered with Badger volunteers and worked a student job that all helped to um, meet make me meet more people as well as really build my community. So another great way to build your community is by living on campus. UW offers 20 residence halls in two neighborhoods, Lakeshore and Southeast. Both are about equal distance to campus buildings. And then regardless of which one you get placed in, you will have a good experience at either. Um, the placing in the residence halls is a lottery system, but um, so you would rank the residence halls as well as talk about if you want to have a roommate or if you want to room random and then they would kind of use that information to determine where you would be placed. Also at UW, freshmen are encouraged but not required to live on campus. And then within the residence halls, there are 10 different residential learning communities that students can apply to live in. So learning communities revolve around certain topics such as studio, which is dedicated to the arts, and women in science and engineering, as well as greenhouse, which is focused on plants and sustainability. And so that's a really good way to meet people, live on the same floor as them, who all share a common interest, but aren't necessarily in the same major. So again, a really, really good way to meet people. And then another way that students can create community is through first year interest groups or FIGs. They're, they are a cluster of about three core courses that are focused on a topic that you'll take with the same 25 students for the semester. So it's really a cohort style of learning and it really allows students to get involved in a certain topic. Um, so that's another really cool way to get involved, especially if you want to meet certain people or you really have an interest. Again, just like the learning communities, they do not have a certain major requirement. So although you'd be meeting people with a certain interest, you would really also be able to meet people outside of your major as well. So we also have over a thousand different student organizations. So there's a variety of pre-professional organizations for nearly every major, such as pre-law society, kinesiology club, in addition to more fun or interest-based clubs, such as the Badger Cheese Club, or hiking, so definitely a lot of things to do um, within the different majors or within the different student organizations. If you're interested in seeing what exactly UW offers, you can Google the Wisconsin Involvement Network or WIN UW Madison, and there it will pop up a list of all of the different organizations. Just note that the, they may be a little less updated just because um, this past spring we did switch to virtual learning. So that, would, that might look a little bit different. So then we also have a variety of intramural and club sports. Intramurals are welcoming to all levels and club sports are a little bit more competitive. So it kind of is just dependent on what you like. We also have 23 Division I varsity of men's and women's sports. So from going to a football game to singing varsity with the women's volleyball teams, these are also a great way to help support fellow Badgers and really feel Badger pride. I also like to note that we have a lot of different arts and culture, not just in um, campus, but also outside of it. We have the Orpheum, which actually has Broadway shows such as Hamilton or Wicked. And then we have the Wisconsin Union, which brings a variety of different speakers and performers to campus. I know while I was on campus, my two favorites were when they brought Jesse McCartney as well as Bassam Yusuf to perform and talk. I thought that was a really great thing to do um, and to learn more. And so when students are at UW, we really want them to create their own unique Wisconsin experience. And this can be done so in so many ways. So students can work to engage in research with one of our 113 plus research centers around campus, apply for internships or co-ops or study abroad, just to name a few. 
Um, so for research, we have undergraduate research scholars, which really does a good job of matching faculty and staff to students interested in conducting research. And students are actually able to conduct research their first year here on campus. Then for study abroad, we have the highest semester study abroad rate in the country. About one in four students study abroad for a semester, and we have a variety of programs as well. So we have anything from winter intercession, which is a few weeks to a semester, a year, to about four to 12 weeks in the summer. So it's really cool to be able to tailor that specifically to you as well. I know that was one of my favorite aspects of my Wisconsin experience. If you're interested in internships or co-ops, we also have a great career center, advisors, and then you might have school or college specific career centers as well. So if that's something you're interested in, I definitely recommend reaching out because there's a lot of great opportunities to get connected. Leadership also comes in a variety of different ways, such as getting the leadership certificate or participating in leadership um, positions within the different student organizations. And then lastly, I always like to mention honors just because this does vary from school to school. So some courses are, you'll be in the same courses as your non-honors peers, but you'll just have a different syllabus. So this might mean that you have a little bit different requirements, you meet for an extra discussion section, but don't think that you'll be in a separate building or anything like that. So for international students specifically, I always like to point out ISS or International Student Services. This is really a great resource for international students. They help with visa compliance, they have academic resources, but they also have a variety of different um, programs to help UW, to help international students really integrate into the Madison community and really feel at home. So the one that I participated in while I was a student was Bridge or Building Relationships in Diverse Global Education. Education. And so that meant that I was a domestic peer partner for my international peer partner. And we attended a couple of bridge wide events throughout the whole program, which has hundreds of international student and domestic student pairs, as well as we went out to brunch together a few times and we went to a couple game days. So that was a really good way for her to have someone to answer questions, show her around campus. And it was also really interesting for me to learn specifically about different questions or challenges international students might have. We also have international student or international reach, which is a program that kind of places international speakers in the community, helping people learn about different perspectives. And then we have Madison Friends of International Students, which is really dedicated to helping support our international students um, in a variety of different ways. So outside of campus, the city of Madison itself also provides a lot of unique experiences. It's home to the Wisconsin State Capitol and it's on an isthmus, so it's located between two lakes. So there's a variety of both kind of more um, urban and city living as well as a lot of opportunities to be outdoors. There's a lot of different bike paths. There's lakes to go swimming or do water sports. So a lot of different things you can do here on campus. So this is kind of, we're getting to the last part of our presentation, but I just wanted to talk about application tips for international students for when you're applying. So the first thing to, things to consider, um, the first thing to note is that students must be aware of each university's international students requirements. This will likely vary by school and it's important that students check their requirements prior to submitting their application. So please make sure to check if you're required to submit official boards or verify how results and other materials can be submitted. Kind of going off the last point, regarding language readiness, note that universities may assess this differently and may have different requirements, so please be aware of TOEFL or IELTS ranges as well as what is required. I also want to point out that you should continue checking for updates, especially with COVID. So I know, for instance, that UW-Madison has now added the Duolingo English test, I said that before, for and TOEFL and IELTS, so this is all um, a way that students can complete the English proficiency requirements, and I'm sure for some other schools, they may be adding things as well. 
So I also said this a little bit before, but when writing your essays, make sure that you give yourself enough time to complete them. They're a really important part of your application and allow admission counselors to see a college ready writing as well as see content. We want to learn more about you and essays are a really, really great way to do that. And then when you're applying through Common App, you should also generally not adjust the grading scales yourself. Admissions counselors are aware of the different grading scales and converting them could cause confusion. I know at UW and um, a lot of other schools and colleges as well, if you'd like to clarify something, feel free to talk more about it on the additional information section of your application. So if you have a certain grading scale or just really anything in general that could be a really really great way to tell us more or if you want to clarify something that's a really great place to do so it's also good practice to consider quality over quantity and what's most important so you don't need to submit a ton of extra materials or letters of recommendation we really do value the quality over them of the quantity of them again if you have things that are really important definitely feel free to share those with us and submit them but don't feel like you need to submit a ton of them just to kind of submit them. The educational history section is also a really important part of your application and it can be super helpful to explain if you've gone to multiple schools or have been in different curricula. This can help us when we're re reviewing transcripts and just kind of help us see um, your progression as well as make sure that we understand exactly what curricula you've gone through or um, if you've gone to multiple schools, just so we can be aware of that. And so lastly, start early and give yourself enough time to complete. So this can really help you make sure that you don't feel stressed, you're not rushing at the end, as well as making sure that you do have enough time to submit all of your materials. And then don't be afraid to ask questions. So feel free to reach out to our admissions office. I'll put the contact information on the screen at the end, but that can be a really good way to ask any questions you might have, figure out what materials you need, as well as just clarify any questions that you may have in general. So now that you've heard more about UW, I'll just talk about next steps and kind of what you would do at various stages of your application process. So if it's too early for you to apply, continue to focus on your academics and taking challenging coursework. Continue to, getting, to get involved in extracurricular activities, whether or not that's clubs, sports, volunteering, or work opportunities, and really just find your interests and continue to explore. When you're ready to apply, Make sure you submit your application and all of your materials by the deadline, as well as to continue to let us know if you have any questions throughout the process. And then once you've applied, this doesn't really apply to anyone now, but continue to check your um, email and update your email if that changes. Um, and then you can apply for scholarships as well. And then you'll also wanna make sure that you submit or you check your student center for any updates or any communications we have, may have sent you as well. And so then if you've been admitted, again, this doesn't really apply to students now, but definitely feel free to attend our admitted student events, submit your deposit, connect with us on social media, and really kind of complete those admitted student checklist items don't worry, you'll be receiving more communication about these um, in the future, but this can be a really great way um, to kind of learn more about campus and really make sure that it's a good fit for you. So I'll be available to answer any questions you have right now. I'm just gonna pop up the contact information and then I'll go through the questions that you all submitted through Q&A. But thank you so much everyone for listening. I know that we went a little over, but I will stay to answer any questions that you may have. So thank you so much for your time. All right, so I'm just gonna leave this up and then I can pop the video back on. Oops. I can pop the video back on and we'll start with any questions. Okay. So I have a question. Uh, are there differences between a public and private institution when speaking about learning outcomes, professor office hours, and student to faculty ratio? So that's a really good question. And it will really just vary on the size of 
um, the institution, public versus private, and things like that, state schools do tend to be a little bit larger. So that although there may be more people in your class, you'll still have the opportunity to view office hours, go to them with your professor, as well as um, you'll probably have a discussion section, which is a smaller class with a TA per, or professor that you're really able to ask those in-depth questions. So although there may be some differences, um, definitely feel free to clarify those with the schools you're attending or thinking about specifically, but generally you'll still have that um, same ability to meet with the professor, get your questions answered, and you usually will have, if it's a larger lecture at first, smaller class sizes as well to kind of supplement that and really make sure that you have an opportunity to get your questions asked. Yeah, so what would be some unique features of colleges versus university? So generally, um, university just means that they have um, kind of like undergrad and graduate school as well, whereas college does not. That is the main difference with them. So please share the requirements for IB diploma students. So if you're interested or if you are an IB diploma student, if you actually Google UW-Madison admissions, there's a little drop down menu and it will talk about all of the IB requirements for students, specifically um, with the regards of HL and SL courses, as well as what our requirements are for the diploma. But with that being said, if you do indicate that you are getting the diploma on your application, we will expect successful completion um, of that when we do final grade review. I have one, can you please share how I can pursue a computer engineering and an arts double major? Will this increase the duration and cost of the degree? So that's a really, really great question. A lot of students double major on campus. I was a double major in political science and communication arts. Um, my friend, um, majored in double majored in computer science as well as mechanical engineering so there's a lot of different ways to do that in regards to increasing the duration and cost of the degree um, if you take summer courses or anything like that that may increase the tuition just because you would be enrolled in summer but not necessarily i know so many people who double majored in computer or in computer engineering or engineering in general as well as a different major within um, letters in science or something like that and they were able to graduate in four years. My biggest piece of advice to you and to anyone interested in double majoring as well as just students attending campus is to meet your, with your advisor. They're such a great resource in being able to plan out different steps of your academic career, really help you finding out requirements for your major and making sure that you're on track. With that being said, they can also be a really great resource if you know that you want to double major, helping you plan that out early, um, seeing what courses would be good to take when, and really make sure that you're on track to do that. So if that's something you're interested in, definitely um, meet with your advisor, but don't think that it will automatically increase the time to degree or the cost of attendance. Yeah, so what are some of the popular majors and minors at UW-Madison? So um, the global, again, we don't have minors, but our certificates, the global health certificate was actually the most popular certificate. So we actually have just created a global health minor. Um, in regards to other popular majors, um, the Business is always a really popular one, the different types of business, engineering, computer science, but we also have a lot of different social science. So I know political science is a really um, popular one as well as um, biochemistry. So a lot of different ones there. In regards to um, popular certificates, like I said, the global health was a popular certificate, is now a major, um, but the digital study certificate is actually also really really popular and so that is for students who are interested in doing film or production really allowing them to get hands-on experience with that i know that one of my friends while i was on campus was a digital studies certificate got that and was able to actually intern um, at one of the late night shows in new york city putting what he learned in the classroom to work outside of it so a lot of different opportunities there um, in regards to popularity and kind of the different options that you have with them. Yeah. 
Yeah, so kind of the same question. I'd like to pursue a business major and a liberal arts minor. Can you walk us through how students can pursue that and also how the pop and also the popular liberal arts minors. So we have a lot of different minors. Um, I'm a lot of different ones that you're able to participate in. Um, offhand, I know the digital studies certificate, like I said, students, some students are also, business students are also able to get a Spanish certificate to make themselves more marketable if they wanna learn a second language or anything like that. Um, definitely, I know the leadership certificate is also really popular with business students, helping them get leadership experience as well. So again, I've kind of said this before, but definitely um, very easy to get a major as well as a minor or a double major if that's something you decide you want to do on campus. And so what you would do or, um, is to meet with your advisor, really talk to them about your interest in business, as well as different things that you're interested in studying. If you Google UW-Madison certificates, you're actually able to get a better idea of what certificates we offer, as well as the requirements for each. So that could help you make your decision as well, kind of figuring out what the requirements are, what your options are. But then once you get to campus, um, definitely meet with your advisor, talk to them about your interests, and they'll really be able to guide you in what might be a good match or what um, certificates or majors might be a good match for your interests or figure out what you could do with them after graduation. So that would be my piece of advice for you as well. So can you please share the admission and application requirements for the Wisconsin Madison FIT program? So that would mean if that's something you are interested in, what you would do is you would be a student within the fashion and textiles design major in the School of Human Ecology at UW-Madison. And then before your senior year, you would apply to the Fashion Institute of Technology in New York City. And you would really work with your advisor in SOHI to do that. With that being said, if that's something you're interested in now, um, you can go to SOHI's website and really see the different steps and the requirements for that. Um, that, that would really be your best resource as well. And then on the bottom of the SOGI page and kind of all the college um, and schools pages, you're able to see contact information. So if you have specific questions about a certain college or a certain program, definitely feel free to reach out to them as they are the best resource for that as well. I would like to learn more about your AP requirements. Also, would the TOEFL be waived off for IB students as we have studied an international English language curriculum. So for our AP requirements, um, if you're talking about what scores we have to, in order to get credit, um, we generally award credit for scores of three or higher. And so this would range from general elective credit as well as to direct course equivalency credit. It would just kind of depend on the score. If you have specific questions about courses, if you Google UW-Madison credit by exam and then click AP, we actually have a list of all the different AP courses as well as how they would transfer to us based on what specific score. And then, like I said, so if all four years of um, high school were taught English, then we would, we would waive the TOEFL requirement. So from, next I have from an admissions and scholarship point of view, can you share how each item weighs in terms of importance when deciding on admission, transcript, recommendation letters, essay, test scores, extracurriculars, and community service? So you, for scholarships, I will say that um, the admissions office doesn't administer or handle any scholarships. That is done through the scholarship office or financial aid, so you can definitely contact them. Um, if you do contact our office, we'd be happy to refer you to the correct one as well. So I can't really speak to that, but from an admission standpoint, academics excellence is most important. So we really will put weight on the um, transcript and kind of how students are doing. But with that being said, um, I always like to say, again, we use a holistic review process. So we will not um, kind of look for a minimum or things like that. Um, we won't just because students maybe had a softer semester or something happened or anything like that. Don't feel like students can apply just because they maybe don't have the highest test score or anything like that. So we really do do a holistic review. We do review everything in the application, 
um, but academic excellence is most important. So I have a question about um, full-time jobs and internships. It says, can you go over what type of full-time job and internship opportunities undergraduate students can expect at the University of Wisconsin-Madison? So if you're interested in working a full-time job, I'm not sure that you would necessarily be able to do that over the school year. Definitely could. It might just be a little bit more challenging because of your courses and kind of scheduling around that. And then with internship opportunities that will really, really vary from um, student to student and what exactly their interests are. So I know um, my friend actually interned at John Deere because he was interested in mechanical engineering. I had friends um, intern in New York working with different um, different like late night shows and production. When I was a student, I interned at the Wisconsin State Capitol because I was a political science major. Um, I had student or I had friends intern at different um, business companies and things like that. So it really just does depend on what your interests are. I really am glad that you're interested in doing that when you're on campus. A really great way to do that or to find out what is available is through the student job website that will talk more about, you know, what's available for students, if there's any prerequisites, anything they're looking for. And then you're also able to talk to your advisor or the career services office to get an idea of what might be a good internship or job opportunity specifically for you. Yeah, so I have a question about which would be preferred between the IELTS, TOEFL, or Duolingo English test. We don't give preference to either. We really just look to all of them um, in terms of English proficiency. All right, so I have a question about how long should the application essay be? What are some of the typical questions you ask as an application essay? Yeah, so that's a really good question. Um, in regards to length, I do believe that there is a 500 or 750 word limit, but um, you're actually able to see the essay prompts that we have um, for that and that we'll be using for the 2020, 2021 application cycle or no, I'm sorry, 20, for fall of 2021 students who are coming then on our essay if you are on our website, if you Google UW-Madison and mission requirements, um, there will be a pop up with a drop down menu about essays and there you're able to see what the different essays are. Um, the different prompts do vary between Common App and UW System App, but regardless of which application you use, you'll also have a campus essay that is specific to UW-Madison, asking you to talk about specifically why UW-Madison and why you think it will be a good fit for you. And then the other prompts, um, again, vary between which application you use. In regards to length, um, that is really something that's up to you. Don't feel like you have to talk a lot just to exceed, just to get to that um, word limit. I've seen a lot of good essays that um, don't necessarily meet that word limit, but are very concise and talk about, um, you know, what students want to talk about and really get the point home. So that is just something that's up to you. Um, but don't feel like you have to just write a lot just to meet the word limit. All right, so I have a question about how do learning communities work and can I share information about meal plans as well. So for learning communities, that would mean you would apply to live in them when you're filling out your housing form. And so you can see the different learning communities that will be offered by Googling UW Madison learning communities. There's a lot of different ones, again, ranging from studio to greenhouse to women in science and engineering, a lot of different topics and so what that would mean is that you would live in you would live on the same floor as students who are interested in that same interest that you have and they would really do a variety of activities and involvements that focus on that but with that you wouldn't be in the same major and you wouldn't necessarily be taking the same courses as other people within your learning community it really just means that they have the same interest as you and then for more information about meal plans, again, that's something that's not handled through our office. Um, it's through housing and dining services. So if you're interested in living on campus and getting a meal plan, you can just Google UW-Madison housing and dining services, um, and they'll talk about more about meal plan requirements, what's offered, and kind of the different tiers there. With that being said, um, if you do go to the net price calculator with um, and kind of entering your information to talk about you know, what your personal costs would be. I will say that um, 
room and board is included in that. So don't think that the price will be in addition to that as well. Sorry to keep referring you there. It's just, I think they would have the most up-to-date information and I really wanna make sure that I'm referring you to the right people. Yeah, so I have a question. Do you offer merit or need-based scholarships? What are the typical scholarship grant amounts? So again, scholarships are something that are handled um, through the scholarship office, not um, something we administer through admissions. So what I would say is that um, there's not necessarily a typical amount. It really does depend on the scholarship and they do vary from year to year. And we do offer a variety of both. So that's definitely that student, something that students are able to take advantage of. We also have the King Morgan Scholarship, which is one very competitive full scholarship for international students um, that students are able to apply to. So if that's something that you're interested in, you can Google UW-Madison King Morgan Scholarship and kind of see um, the different requirements and what we look for and learn more about the scholarship there as well. All right, so I have a question. How can students apply for the research and teaching assistant, assistantships on campus? So if you're applying for research, um, I know I've said this before, but your advisor is a great resource. You can also get involved with undergraduate research scholars, and they do a really good job of matching faculty and staff to different research opportunities on campus. Um, if you Google UW-Madison research or just look if you have a certain type of research that you're interested in, so maybe if it's, you know, more science-based like chem or bio or if it's social science-based or um, kind of market-based, anything like that, going to the specific school or college that you're interested in, there they might have more specific information about that as well. But I think a really good place to start is undergraduate research scholars and really figuring out what your interests are and what opportunities are currently available on campus. And then, like I said, you are able to do research your first year here on campus as well. And then for te teaching assistantships on campus, that will vary by um, professor to professor. So some professors like grad students to be their TAs and some students like students who have just taken the course and done well in it. So it really does vary. If that's something you're interested in, um, you can talk to different professors if there's a certain subject you want to be a TA for, um, but they'll also be listed on the student job website as well. So what is your campus size and what is the nearest international airport? So um, the campus size is 44,000 students. That does include undergraduate and graduate students. And the nearest international airport would be Chicago. Um, many, that we also have Minneapolis in Minnesota, but Chicago is a little bit closer. I know when I was going on um, different trips or flying, I there's a bus that goes right from Chicago. It'll take you to your, to your specific terminal and then right up to the UW-Madison campus. And there's also a student rate for that. So that's something that was super, super helpful for me when I was a student. And I know a lot of other students really enjoy the convenience of that as well. Yeah, so can you share about campus safety for you your, for your university and also about safety, um, campus safety precaution measures taken in times of COVID-19? So that is a really good question. Um, so I'm going to start with the first one, which is general campus safety. So with that, we have um, a variety of different kind of safety measures in, in place. And so in a lot of um, the Lakeshore Path, for instance, we do a good job of having these kind of poles that people are able to press a button if they need help and a police officer will be there within 90 seconds. We also have a variety of different safety measures um, for students in general. So I know one thing that I like to point out is UW-Madison Safe Walk. And so what that is, it's a group of students um, who are really dedicated to making sure that others, students are able to get where they want to go safely. And so students are able to put in, actually at SOAR, they'll put in that number in their phone and then they can call it and a, um, a male and a female student will come pick the student up wherever they are and then walk them wherever they're going. I know I used that a couple times when I was up late studying at the library. Um, we also have different police precincts on campus kind of making sure that everything's in order and that students feel safe. And then um, 
if you have certain safety concerns or you just have questions about it, if you live in the residence halls, your resident or your house fellow is also a really great resource for that. Um, for campus safety precaution measures and taken in times of COVID. So we're doing a mix of um, kind of a blended approach for fall 2020. For more information about that, if you Google UW-Madison Smart Research, it will kind of talk about the whole safety plan, but I can just talk about that generally right now. And making sure that um, campus, so making sure that students and faculty on campus feel safe. There's going to be online options for students to take courses there um, if they don't feel comfortable coming to class, as well as making sure that students and faculty that are um, in class are able to be in classrooms that will allow for social distancing and then requiring face masks um, to be worn by faculty and students to make sure that everyone feels safe. Again, I really do encourage you to look at that Smart Research website for specific questions um, and kind of to get a more holistic understanding of that. So I have a question. I want to learn more about the honors program for fall 2021. Um, yeah, so just talking about the application requirements. So um, the admission, the Office of Admissions actually doesn't handle honors. That's something that's done through the honors office. And so if you Google um, UW-Madison honors program, you'll actually be able to see the specific program requirements, deadlines, um, as well as what you should, what you'll need to apply for and kind of what you'll need to submit if you are interested in honors. Um, and I believe that is something that you do after you've been admitted. Yeah, so I have a question. Can you provide more details of what's life like and culture of the Madison City? So Madison is a really, really engaged and vibrant city. Being with the capital, we have a lot of different things, or being in the same city as the capital, we have a lot of things going on with that. Um, students are very involved. And we also have a lot of different arts and cultures. So like I said before, we have the Wisconsin Union Directorate, which brings a lot of speakers and performers in there. And then we also have different um, concert venues and museums throughout the campus and Madison community as a whole. So that can be a really, really great way to learn more, to see some things, to um, attend concerts or speakers or performers. So I know that's something that I really, really enjoyed about my time on campus. Um, there's also a lot of different things to do outside of just going to class or doing um, going to different arts or performance studios. It's a really green city. It's a really active city. I kind of said this before, but um, being on a lake or being located between two lakes, there's a lot of different things to do. So there's kayaking, people like to go swimming. Um, we also are rated in the top 10 most bike friendly cities in the US. So a lot of people have bikes. I actually just bought a new bike yesterday. Um, so super excited to hit the different trails and bike paths there. Um, so there's just a lot to do there um, in regards to the campus life, but also the life and culture of Madison as a city. Yeah, so I have a question about how, mu how much access will I have to faculty members as a bachelor's degree student? So that's a really good question. So all faculty members will have office hours that students are able to go to. If they have any certain questions about um, a course that they're in. If you're interested, if you're talking about it in terms of research and you know how will you be able to connect with them? I kind of already talked about that with undergraduate research um, research scholars. But if you have a certain question for a faculty or staff, even if you're not in their course or anything like that, you're definitely always free to email them or um, to kind of go see when they might be available to talk if you have any specific questions that way. Um, I know if you're talking about it in the sense of it being a larger institution and you're kind of afraid of not being able to get questions answered. I know um, before coming to school here, that was one of my concerns as well, is what if I'm not able to get my questions answered? But I have definitely found that not to be the case. Um, we are actually ranked number one um, on Rate My Professors, which is where students go and rate the professors on a variety of different 
you know, criteria and things like that. And so I think that really speaks to students really enjoying learning from their professors as well as faculty and staff genuinely being engaged. And I think the faculty are really engaged at UW-Madison. So you'll have a variety of different ways to get in touch with them, get in contact with them. It's, if it's a certain course, you'll be able to take office hours as well as just taking a lot of different um, involvement. And there's a lot of different ways that you're able to connect with them. Yeah, so can you share more information about your current Indian students on campus? Um, so if you, I forget what the spreadsheet is, but I believe it is in fall 2020 that we offered 100, we welcomed 108 Indian students to campus. Obviously we admitted more, but those are the students that decided to come here. Um, and we also have a lot of Indian students who are here for grad school as well. Yeah, so what are the freshman application requirements for spring 2021? So the application will open on August 1st. Um, if you're interested in applying for spring, that will close October 1st. Yeah, that will close October 1st. Um, and the requirements will be the same as other requirements. So you'll submit your application, pay an application fee, um, TOEFL or IELTS, SAT or ACT, letters of recommendation, and essay. Yeah, so I have a question. What academic support will I receive as an undergraduate student? So we have a lot of different support systems for students. If you're talking academically, we have Greater University Tutoring Services, or GUTS, um, which is really able to help students in a variety of different courses, able to help them um, kind of learn more, meet with either a peer tutor or um, there is also some faculty and staff, different study groups that students are able to go to if they have certain questions about a specific subject. We also have the Writing Center here on campus, which is really great for students who want to get an essay looked over for grammar, make sure that everything flows like that. Um, I know also in a lot of my classes, um, before an exam or a test or anything, if there was something big coming up, that oftentimes the professor or TA would host a study, a study session for um, like a week before the test, just making sure that students were able to get their questions answered and really allowing them a time to talk with other students as well as them and really being able to work through some things as well. Um, in regards to support outside of, oh, it, it, it does say academic support, my apologies, but I'll just talk about it. In regards to support outside of academics, we have a lot of different things to do. So we have university health services, which is really great. Students can drop in for flu shots. They can also make an appointment if they, for anything ranging from like a sore throat to um, thinking they sprained their ankle to having a cold, just a variety of different services, which is really, really great for students. And they also have mental health services. So a lot of different things that students can take advantage of there. All right. So is it possible to start new groups on campus? How easy is it around campus and the surrounding city? So if you're talking about a new student organization, yes, it is super easy to start a new student org. So if you think that there's something we're missing, you're able to, you'll need a faculty or staff to kind of not sponsor it, but to kind of be a chair and be involved in it. And then you are able to, you would fill out an application and then you would be able to kind of submit that for approval to submit a new group. Um, in regards to, for how easy is it to get around campus and the surrounding city, um, I think it's really, really easy. Again, campus is a really bike friendly city. It's, um, it's also really walkable. With that being said, as a student, you'll also get a free bus pass, which goes not only around campus, but also to the surrounding areas and kind of the greater Madison area. So I know that's something that I really enjoyed as a student, being able to use that to get to um, Target, which is like a super, like a store that has all these different like home goods and clothes and some food um, that was just kind of outside how far I'd like to bike or walk. So that was really great um, as well for getting around campus. 
Yeah, so I have a question about providing a breakdown of tuition, meal, and housing expenses. Um, so that is a really great question. I am going to direct you to the net price calculator or going to the office of um, the registrar to get a specific breakdown. I'm not exactly sure what the breakdown will be um, for the most updated information. So just want to make sure that you're getting that. So I have a question about are we test optional? Um, at this time, we are not op test optional, but we continue to evaluate that. We really want to make sure that students are getting access, to, that students have access to tests and with ACT and SAT being canceled, just note that we are monitoring that. If we do decide to go test optional, um, obviously um, we will post updates on our website and our social media as well. So just continue up, um, checking for updates there as well. As an entering class 12 student, will my admissions be impacted for 2021 as many students this year are deferring and entering college? So I actually um, kind of work with deferred students and we don't actually have that many. So we don't at this time foresee that um, impacting students for the fall 2021 year. And we are keeping that mindful when we're doing deferred enrollment, making sure that students who um, are in our current, going to be current seniors now, will have spaces um, in the upcoming year. So just note that we are being mindful of that. And at this point, we don't, it's not a, we don't foresee it being a problem. And it's with the amount of deferrals we've received, we don't foresee it being a problem for the future. And we are being mindful of that, making sure that we're reserving spaces and that students who are in grade 12 now will be able to come to campus um, and apply and not let defers from this year kind of impact them. So does tuition costs remain the same across all of your undergraduate programs? So as a whole, um, when you look on our website, you'll see tuition, a tuition breakdown. With some programs, I know there is a small fee that is added. I think for engineering, I want to say it's around 500 to 1,000 for the year, um, just because of the lab and kind of material that you'll be using as a student. But generally, it is the same. And if there is a if there is an additional fee, it would say that on the website and you would learn more about that as well. All right, so I have a question about I-20s. Are we required to submit the I-20 for fall 2021 at the time of applying or after gaining um, admission? Can you share your I-20 requirements in terms of the amount to be shown? Yes, yeah, so that's a really good question. So you would apply for the I-20 after you've been admitted and submitted your um, admission deposit. At that time, you would be able to submit all of your materials. We would process them. And then after that, you we would issue your I-20. Um, in regards to the amount to be shown, that will actually say on the Teradata portal, which is the portal we use for determining or for the I-20 process. I believe it is the complete amount of tuition and fees. So like the, the all costs for one year. So I think that would, yeah. So all fees for one year, I believe is the amount that you have to be shown, but it will say a specific amount on Teradata. Again, if you want to email us, we'd be, we'd be able to answer that directly um, via email as well. I'm just not completely sure. I don't work with processing I-20s, so I just really encourage you to look to our website or to email us just to make sure that you get the most updated and up-to-date information. All right, so I know we went a little bit over, but I really, really appreciate all of your time um, and your patience throughout this, so definitely thank you for tuning in. I'll leave our contact information up, but it looks like we are out of questions. So with that, I am going to stop sharing my screen. But again, thank you so much for joining and definitely feel free to let us know if you have any questions. Um, looks like there's a poll, so I definitely yeah. recommend you take that now. Right, absolutely. Students, uh, we kindly recommend you to please uh, take the poll. Uh, so that you can answer. Um, Sarah, are you able to see me? Yes. Okay, great. I'm, I'm happy to uh, see that. Uh, uh, to the students, the parents, and the guidance counselors, thank you so much for all the wonderful questions uh, that you've asked, Miss Sarah. 
Um, I really appreciate you taking this time out to join her. And to Miss Sarah Waller, thank you so much for all the wonderful information that you have shared, um, not only about your session topic, but also about your institution. I think uh, the questions were really good for today. And uh, thank you for taking the time. I know we went over time, but that's absolutely fine. But answering many, all of these questions in full detail, we really appreciate that. And to the attendees, I'm going to just stop the polling right now because I'm sure Miss Sarah has to go for the day. She has other engagements, so we must uh, respect that. And uh, Sarah, are you able to see the results on your screen? Yes, I can see okay. that. Wonderful, wonderful to see that. I'm just going to uh, quickly uh, stop sharing with everyone so that everyone has seen it. And I'd like to thank you once again for taking your time for, uh, uh, to joining us at the Knowledge at KPD Admissions 101 workshop series. Uh, students, parents, and guidance counselors, especially who are joining us today. Uh, this session, as I mentioned earlier, and in our outreach campaign is recorded. So we will be sharing it with your school so you can share it with other students. And of course, to the other guidance counselors, we will be emailing to all of the schools across India so that they can also view it along with their students and parents' student body. But I think that's a wrap for today. I would like, please join me in saying thanks to Ms. Sarah Wohler. And uh, Sarah, I know it's very early in the morning, but thank you once again. <laughs> An amazing session, really wonderful, uh, full of information, insights and knowledge. So we truly appreciate your kind time. Yeah, thank you so much, um, everyone, for joining and really appreciate it as well. Again, definitely feel free to um, reach out to us if you have any questions and continue to check our website for updates. Great. Thank you, Sarah. Goodbye. I wish you a wonderful day. Thank you to all the attendees. Good evening. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.